register <laughs> doing deliveries. I worked there for 23 years. And in that time, I grew to appreciate the kindness and loyalty of the community, the value of hard work, and the ups and downs of keeping the business afloat. Serving on the City Planning Commission would be the honor of my 18-year career in the architectural field. I studied architecture at New York City Technical College in downtown Brooklyn, where I received my associate's degree in architectural technology. I went on to Pratt Institute, where I earned my bachelor's degree in architecture and graduated with honors. In 2001, I began working for J.L.J. Caliendo Architect. At the firm, I learned zoning and code analysis, have regularly worked on projects with countless city agencies, and closely followed zoning and building code changes over 18 years. This practical experience will benefit me as a commissioner. Public service is also deeply important in my family. My older brother, who passed away at the age of 34, was a New York City police officer, having worked in nine years at the 79th Precinct in the Bedford-Stuyvesant, working midnight tours, and then later as a sergeant out of the 43rd Precinct in the Bronx. My passion for the community I live in took form of community board service. I applied in 2005 and was appointed by then late Hel the late Helen Marshall to Queens Community Board 9, which covers the areas of Richmond Hill, Ozone Park, Kew Gardens, and Woodhaven. I immediately joined the Land Use Committee and served there ever since. Over my 13 years of experience on CB9, including three years as chair of the board, not only have I gained experience working closely on major land use matters affecting our communities during that time, but also developed a deep appreciation for the importance of conducting city business in a transparent, respectful, consistent, and open-minded manner both with fellow board members and with the public. These are the values I will continue to uphold on the City Planning Commission. Finally, I want to state for the record that I will follow all guidance issued by the Conflicts of Interest Board regarding my potential appointment. In particular, the principal owner of my firm has stated I will not be assigned any work or project that may appear before the CPC or BSA, and I will recuse myself from any such projects moving forward. I also plan to resign from Queens Community Board 9 if confirmed to this position. In conclusion, I am truly honored to have been nominated to serve on the City Planning Commission, and I thank you all very much for considering my appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, what are your thoughts on public-private partnerships for land use, planning, and development in our great city? And do you see opportunities for growing these types of relations in the future? Uh, for me, I believe the, the public view and the, and the process is very important. Um, from a community, port, a community board's point of view, I always thought it was uh, important whenever something came up, it was announced at CPC that, was, uh, that we need to get it out to the public, that I would always make sure that the, both the land use chair and myself would make sure we reached out to all the local civics and uh, even you know, the residents that attend, like the 102 Council and so forth, to make sure that they're aware of what's going on. And I think the more informed they are, uh, the better the process can be. And I will ensure that, you know, weighing every decision that I make sure I look at, to make sure the community weighed in on issues, besides the City Council, and, you know, go from there. I couldn't attest to that. As a member of the Planning Commission, how would you begin to address our affordable housing crisis? Would you call for substantially higher densities to achieve affordable housing growth? I think that we got to look at every, every community is different. And speaking from the Richmond Hill point of view, from, from what I saw when on the last rezoning, we had Jamaica Avenue, which was up zone. Uh, it was a lower, it was a C23 and R6B, and I'm sorry if I'm going out zoning. But to me, I thought that it, it was great that it was up zone because it was a commercial thoroughfare, the entire district, and it would help promote businesses. And the other good thing about that particular location was that at least the transit system was there. So it gave people an opportunity. If there was development within that area, people would be able to use mass transit to get around. But I think you have to approach every community uh, differently, taking regards um, how the infrastructure around them is. And, you know, I, I try to stay, I try to would think you would stay within the character of the community and, and not like, you know, just drop a, uh, not a ridiculous zone, but put a, a zone that does not apply to that area. So, I mean, I can go on now. <laughs> 
a little nervous. Does anybody have any <laughs> questions? No questions, Margaret? Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's really good to have a, a community board chair and, uh, and also with your community board experience to be on the city planning. I just came from a hearing this morning um, at the city planning uh, commission fighting for my community. And I was looking, I was reviewing some of your, your response to the, the questions. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on, in terms of um, understanding the impacts on a community, not just in Leaded, but also in the future um, when there are development decisions that are being made? A, a great question. Yeah, speaking from a community board standpoint, when I saw our area get rezoned, Kew Gardens and in Richmond Hill, it, you know, like for example, they took an area that was a lower density R4 or R5 and made it R7. That was a big thing for developers because they started taking down one and two family houses and started building apartment houses. The parking got waived, so the problem there was there was not enough parking for the residents living there. But I think when you do major developments like this, there's a major impact, and I, and I always get concerned about the emergency services like police department, fire department, schools, and you know, there's already a, I felt like the infrastructure was already overburdened with the transit and sewer system. So whenever I see major developments, I always think about that first, how what kind of impact that's gonna have on that, and also as well as on the residents. So for me, um, using Kew Gardens as an example, because there's a lot of development going on right there, right now, and yeah. we're talking major developments of, you know, 10 families, 20 families, even 30 family unit apartment buildings that were where A traditionally prison. it was one and two family homes. And, you know, the residents, because <laughs> I took the brunt of it at the, at the community board meetings, were very upset about it. And said, <coughs> you're, you're, they're building out of the character of the neighborhood. Why did you let this happen? And you know, I would hope in the future that, you know, when rezones are done like this, that uh, the, the residents, the public, uh, their opinion gets weighed a little bit more in regards to this. And uh, you know, but in regards to when developments are happening, I do think about all those the effect it has on emergency services and schools. I, I think my other question is what. Um, that we've been going through in our district as an example. I mean, there's all these technicality and one of the uh, development, there's three development projects coming all at once to my district and with our scale buildings. And but because of a technicality, a minor modification <clears throat> versus a major modification that the city planning, um, not the commission, uh, the department of city planning decided it is a minor modification. So it doesn't have to go to ULER, doesn't have to go to community board, doesn't have to go to city council. And that's where the debate is right now. And uh, so the borough president and I, we supported, we submitted a text amendment <laughs> and we wanted to go through a ULER because that would give us a full review from the community board yeah. and city planning commission will also have their review and then it will come to the city council. Uh, so those are the, uh, I mean, those are the technicality thing. I mean, how would you see yourself in terms of being on a commission and really looking at those situations and debating and making sure that, that the community does get uh, a full participation and not being eliminated because of certain technicalities? That's actually a great question because I was always concerned about the ULA process, I believe in, because it does reach out from the community board. It's supposed to trickle down to the rest of the community. What I always found was whenever we would uh, introduce when we had the rezoning, that a lot of the residents that came to our board meetings were not even informed. They didn't know anything about it. And I felt, to me, I felt workshops are probably necessary to be done with CPC, and they recently did one at Queensborough Hall for land use, which I thought was absolutely fantastic for community board members to at least be educated on the basic knowledge of how C uh, city planning operates. And I feel like these workshops should really be expanded to a lot of the residents. And how I would do that was I was always had, I always reached out to all my local civics and I kept in touch with them and they used to have great turnouts at their meetings. And whether I would speak myself or send my land use chair, 
I thought that was a great tool to inform the people. So if they had any issues, they can come to the community board, talk to myself or talk to Lenny so they can be informed on the process and what they need to do to weigh in. That way, city planning and the elected officials see that the community is involved and they have concerns or if, whether they're for the project or not, but at least have a chance to voice their opinion, but at least be educated on the process and the matter. I think that's very critical, especially in the city of New York. Well, unfortunately, the community board doesn't have that yeah. expertise. Yeah, and I, I know some borough president provide um, a planning uh, fellow or to really help with that. So yeah. I think that's that's important. But really having city planning working together with the community, because we're talking about city planning. Where is the planning? <laughs> A lot of time when development comes in, there was no planning that involves the community. Right. So I that's think right. that is something that I would look forward to working with you and, and being on the commission to really help push that so that the community can fully uh, get involved and, and be in the process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councilmember Adams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Raj, uh, congratulations. You. Um, very, very proud of you for, um, for this moment in time. You and I have known each other for about nine years yeah. or so. Uh, we are former colleagues, both former uh, chairpersons of Community Board 9 and Community Board 12, respectfully. And I personally uh, want to vouch for your great work. Uh, your knowledge of land use and ULERP process. And I know that we are uh, accepting um, a wonderful uh, candidate for this position. Uh, once again, I congratulate you. I thank you for your countless years. I mean, we can count them, but the hours are countless on a community board. Every day runs together, so this, it's one long day, much like the council, I might add. <laughs> but I want to congratulate you. Uh, community board's loss is truly, truly the mayor's gain. So congratulations, Raj. Yes. Thank you very much, Council Member Adams. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. Um, let's have a vote. Roll we'll call Committee on Rules, pre-considered M, appointment of Mr. Rampershad, Chair Kozlowitz. I wholeheartedly vote aye, and I really look forward to continuing working with you. Gibson. On behalf of the Borough of the Bronx, congratulations. <laughs> I look forward to working with you. Had to throw that in. Thank you. Chin. Look forward to working with you, and congratulations, I vote aye. Lanceman. Traeger, Adams. Once again, an enthusiastic aye. Mm. Matteo. A vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Pre-considered M has been adopted by the committee. Congratulations. Thank, thank you very much. We're going to uh, keep the meeting open.